Hi, Terry Van Noy. Welcome to Math Class with Terry V. Hope this video helps you out, and if you enjoy it, please share it, comment, or like it. And you can also go to my website, mathpowerline.com. It's a math resource blog, uh, lesson videos for students, and other resources for parents and teachers. Give me a call, or go to my website or email. All right, let's go to today's lesson. All right, this video is for those of you in geometry class who are looking at what happens when you have a central angle of a circle or an inscribed angle of a circle and the arcs that are created. Okay, we're going to be looking at the basics of this idea. And then I'm going to propose some problems for you to try. And as always in these videos, you can pause and on a piece of paper try them out. And then I'll go over them and describe the uh, process of figuring them out in great detail. And at the end of this video series, We'll finish with a self quiz. So let's get started. We have a circle, and what I've drawn is the central angle here. Now let's go ahead and say that we measured it to be, oh, let's say 40 degrees. All right, now just like the inside angle could be as wide open as 360 all the way around, the arc out here from this endpoint to this endpoint is also 40 degrees. Okay, so a central angle creates an arc, and the measure of that arc is the same, 40 degrees, 40 degrees. Okay, now I want you to think of what I call the rubber band method. All right, a central angle, of course, is pinned to the center of the circle. Think of that as a pin, and these are rubber bands. Now, what if I take the pin out, and I move it over here to another part of the circle, a point on the circle somewhere, and then I have what's called an inscribed angle. So I stretch that rubber band clear over here and over here. Now these endpoints are not going to change, but from the center now I have the vertex of the angle on the circle somewhere. Now I want you to notice that this is a 40 degree angle, so what happened to the angle as we stretch it backwards? It turns out that if you measure it, it's half as much. So central angle is 40 inscribed angle is 20. Now what's kind of cool is that this vertex of the angle doesn't have to be straight across it could be anywhere on the circle so let's say we put the pin right here and then again using the rubber band idea we're gonna stretch it from here to here and guess what that is still a 20 degree angle and the same for this. Let's see if I could draw it all right, so we can move that pin anywhere. Okay, anywhere around that circle, that vertex could be put down and pinned in there. And the angle that's formed is always, for the inscribed angle, is half as much as the central angle. So these are going to be 20 degrees. How's that for being pretty simple? All right, so we still have a 40 degree arc, but if it's created by a central angle, it's going to be the same, 40 degrees. But as soon as we move that pin up, and we stretch it across the other part of the circle in any location, I've only shown three here, it is 20. So inscribed angles are half as much as central angles. All right, I know I keep repeat, repeating that, but that's a pretty critical concept. Now, if you keep in mind semicircles are halfway around the circle, then we're going to try a couple of practice problems here in this video to finish. All right, let's take a look. All right, let's do number two, one and two together. And it says state of each angle is an inscribed angle. And if it is, name the angle and the intercepted arc. So this is just about notation, proper notation. All right, number one, the angle right there that's showing at angle R, is that an inscribed angle? Yes, because the endpoints are two points on the circle and R is not in the center. All right, all three points of the angle are on the um, outside of the circle. So um, it is a yes definitely and now we could call it angle R which is okay because no other angles come from that but to be proper let's use the uh, angle symbol and we're gonna name it either TRS or SRT. I'm gonna say SRT. Alright now of course the angle or the, excuse me the arc that's created is this one from T to S and notice how it does not go more than halfway around the circle so that's called a minor arc 
and we're going to just copy down the endpoints of the arc and use the arc symbol. So that's arc TS. That's a minor arc. Number two, yes, of course, that angle has to be an inscribed angle. And let's name it. So we can call it DCE or ECD. I'll just choose ECD. Either way is fine. Make sure that C is the middle letter because that's the vertex. And then we have this arc formed from D to E. And so in our notation, we want to write it like this. And of course, that's a minor arc. And we could flip the letters around, call it arc ED. All right, now let's get to some harder stuff. All right, you do number three and four. This is your job now. Um, pause on the video and write down what you think. What is this angle right here? And what is this angle right here, given the information in the diagram? Go ahead. Number three. Now, if we're looking at the angle here at C, take a look at how C is the vertex of this angle here, right? And so we have an arc that's formed between those endpoints, and it's arc AB. Now, it just so happens it's measured already as being 74. But remember, this is an inscribed angle. So the inscribed angle is half as much. So what's half of 74? That's right, 37 degrees. All right, pretty easy there. Now angle C, number four, is actually um, a pretty wide open angle here. And you notice how it creates that um, major arc there from M to K. So we have to add those two arc measures together, which should be 230. And we're going to take half of that, all right? So angle C is half of 230, which is 115 degrees. All right, now hopefully that felt pretty easy for you. And this is just the start of our video series, so it's going to get a little more complicated. All right, look for the next one in the same title. All right, there you have it. I invite you to go to my website now, mathpowerline.com, or email me or give me a call. The way I work best with students is live online in my classroom. So if I can help you in any way, answer some specific questions, the first lesson with me is free as I show you how everything works. All right, study hard and take care.